Okay, so we're going to read um, a short passage called Mara, the enemy of the Buddha. And um, here we have Manny joining to listen in. So just awesome. Thank you so much, Manny. Oh yeah, we should we should do that. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, that's the wrong chat. Let me just do that as well. Okay, so this is a passage called Mara, the enemy of the Buddha. And let's go right ahead and get into reading. In the life of the Buddha, Mara plays an important part. He is that principle which forms an obstacle to the attainment of Buddhahood. Having told how, in the, ni in the night of the Great Renunciation, the deity of the door swung, o swung the gate open to let the future Buddha out. And the Jataka continues. At that moment, Mara came there with the intention of stopping the Bodhisatta, and standing in the air, he exclaimed, Depart not, O my lord, in seven days from now, the wheel of the empire will appear, and will make you sovereign over the four continents and the two thousand adjacent isles. Stop, O oh my lord. The prince refused to listen to Mara's wily insinuation. When the Buddha, in his search for enlightenment, had tried for seven years to find the right path, and that would actually be the Bodhisatta, before his enlightenment. Um, so let me just start here again. When the Bodhisatta, in the search for his enlightenment, had tried for seven years to find the right path in asceticism and self-mortification, his health began to give way and he was shrunken like a withered branch. At this moment Mara drew near and suggested to him the thought of giving up his search for enlightenment. We read this in the Padana Sutta. Came Namuche. Namuche is another word for Mara used in the texts. Came Namuche, speaking words full of compassion. Thou art lean, ill favorite. Death is in thy neighborhood. Living life, O oh, thou venerable one, is better. Living, thou wilt be able to do good works. Difficult is the way of exertion, difficult to pass, difficult to enter upon. To Mara, thus speaking, the Bhagavad said, O thou, f thou friend of the indolent, thou wicked one, for what purpose hast thou come here? Even the least good work is of no use to me, and what good works are requi required ought Mara to tell? I have faith and power, and understanding is found in me. While thus exerting myself, why would you ask me to live? While the flesh is wasting away, the mind grows more tranquil, and my attention, understanding, and meditation becomes more steadfast. Living thus, my mind does not look for sensual pleasures. Behold a being's purity. Lust thy first army is called, discontent thy second, thy third is called hunger and thirst, thy fourth desire, thy fifth is called sloth and drowsiness, thy sixth cowardice, thy seventh doubt, thy eighth hypocrisy and stupor, gain fame, honor, and what celebrity is falsely obtained by him who exalts himself, himself and de despises others. This, O Namuche, is thine, the black one's fighting army. None but a hero conquers it, and whose, whoever conquers it obtains joy. Woe upon life in this world. 
death in battle is better for me than that I should have than that I should live defeated. Seeing on all sides an army arrayed and Mara on his elephant, I am going out to do battle that he may not drive me from my place. This army of thine, which the world of men and gods cannot conquer, I will crush with understanding. As one crushes an unbaked unearthen pot with a stone. Having made my thoughts subject to me, and my attention firm, I shall wander about from kingdom to kingdom, training disciples. They will be zealous and energetic, obedient to the discipline of one free from lust, and they will go to the place where there is no mourning. And Mara said, For seven years I followed the Bhagavad, step by step, but found no fault in the perfectly enlightened and thoughtful one. When, when the Buddha went to the Bodhi tree, Mara the evil one proposed to shake his resolution, either through, al either through the allurements of his daughters or by force. He, sound he sounded the war cry and drew out for battle. The earth quaked when Mara mounted on his elephant, approached the Buddha. The gods, among them Saka, the king of the gods, and Brahma, tried to stay Mara's army, but none of them were able to stand his ground, and each fled straight before him. And the Buddha said, Here is this multitude exerting all their strength and power against me alone. My mother and my father are not here nor a brother, nor any other relative. But I have these ten perfections, like old retainers long cherished at my board. It is therefore, it, it therefore behooves me to make the ten perfections my shield and my sword, and to strike, and to strike a blow with them that shall destroy this strong army, that shall destroy this strong array. And he remained sitting and reflected on the ten perfections. Mara caused a whirlwind to blow, but in vain. He caused a rainstorm to come in in order to drown the Buddha, but not a drop wetted his robes. He caused a shower of rocks to come down, but the rocks were turned into bouquets. He caused a shower of weapons, swords, spears and arrows to rush against him but they became celestial flowers. He caused the shower of live coals to come down from the sky, but they too fell down harmless. In the same way hot ashes, a shower of sand, and a shower of mud were transmuted into celestial ointments. At last uh, he caused darkness, but the darkness disappeared before the Buddha. As the night vanished before as the night vanishes before the sun. Mara shouted, Siddhartha, arise from that seat. It does not belong to you, it belongs to me. And the Buddha replied, Mara, you have not fulfilled the ten perfections. This seat does not belong to you, but to me. Who have fulfilled the ten perfections? And Mara denied. The Buddha's assertion and call upon his the Buddha's assertion and called upon his army as witness, while the Buddha declared, I have no animate witness present. But stretching out his right hand towards the mighty earth, he said, Will, thou, will you bear witness? And the mighty earth thundered, I bear your witness. And Mara's elephant fell upon its knees, and the f followers of Mara fled away in all directions. When the host of the god saw the army of Mara flee, they cried out, Mara is defeated, Prince Siddhartha has conquered, let us celebrate the victory. 
When the Buddha had attained enlightenment, Mara tempted him once more, saying, Pass away now, Lord, from existence. Let the Blessed One now die. Now is the time for the Blessed One to pass away. And the Buddha replied as follows, I shall not die, O evil one, until not only the brethren and sisters of the order, but also the lay disciples of either sex shall have become true hearers, wise and well trained, ready and learned, versed in the scriptures, the Dhamma, fulfilling all the greater and the lesser duties, correct in life, walking according to the precepts, until they, having thus themselves learned the doctrine, shall be able to tell others of it, preach it, make it known, establish it, open it, minutely explain it, and make it clear. Until they, when others start, when others start vain doctrines, shall be able by the truth to vanquish and refute it, and so to spread the wonder-working truth abroad. I shall not die until this pure religion of mine shall have become successful, prosperous, widespread and popular in, its, in all its full extent, until, in a word, it shall have been well proclaimed among men. When shortly before the Buddha's death Mara appeared, Mara repeated his words as quoted above, Pass away now, Lord, from existence. And the Buddha answered, Make thyself happy. The final extinction of the Tathagata shall take place before long. And that was the passage I was reading today. And um, I would like to just add, um, after the Buddha's death, when he passed into Parinibbana and um, and and g uh, went to liberation and no further becoming, um, Mahakasapa were the one to um, to gather around the order of monks and start reciting the teachings, the Dhamma of the Buddha. And the Buddha did tell his uh, disciple Ananda, the one who were to look after the Buddha while he were alive, he told Ananda, um, because he was crying that the Buddha was dying, so he told him, Ananda, do not cry. After my passing away, don't say you have no teacher. After my passing, the Dhamma will be your teacher. And the Dhamma is the teachings of the Buddha. And so, um, this is uh, a few um, situations or moments in the life of the Buddha and the Bodhisatta where the Mara appeared and tried to stop the Buddha, first saying that the Buddha should live in the world, and after the enlightenment of the Buddha, Mara told the Buddha to leave the world. And so um, this was the reading I had prepared for this session. And um, may you find true peace and happiness and freedom from suffering. And all the best. And thank you so much for listening and uh, keep practicing. Thank you. Thank you, Manny, for joining. That was awesome. Yeah, just just add, I actually did just do a reading of this, um, but for some reason my mic turned off, so I had to re-record it. And uh, yeah, that was interesting in, in relation to the Mars. Yes, I'll stop the recording now, Manny. Okay. <laughs>